Okay, so here we are at the bottom of the record player, and I'm going to give you a little bit of tip. Whenever you're working on a record player, be sure to keep the top cover, the dust cover, on top of the record player um, when you flip it upside down to work on it. Um, make sure that you remove the platter and uh, your, rubber, uh, your rubber slip mat. Um, I guess it's not a slip mat if it's rubber. I'm not really sure what you call it. Um, mat. Um, and with this one is really easy. Most of them are all the same. Um, they're just held onto the bottom with a bunch of Phillips screws and then this cover comes off. Um, so I pull the cover off and inside you'll see that you have your main board here, uh, direct drive motor here, uh, transformer here, um, all the electronics and your gears and levers and everything for the uh, uh, automatic um, drop and retract. And up here you have all your wiring and components for your controls. Now if you look carefully at these controls, you'll see, try not to get the lights. You'll see these two potentiometer, I believe they're ten, potentiometer limit adjustment screws. And a lot of times in these old electronics, let's see if I can get a little bit closer. Nope, that's the best I can do, sorry. A lot of times in these old electronics, when you're dealing with a potentiometer issue, they have these two adjustment screws somewhere in the device and you have to find them. A lot of the times manufacturers will, um, they'll mark them with a little line of paint so that you know where the manufacturer set point was or where they mark it in the factory to be uh, what they spec it to. Now, what I did with this was really simple. Um, it was the first thing that I thought that could be corroded. They're very old. I mean, this record player, I'm not really sure when it was made. I'll see if I can get a date on it here, if there is one. Um, no. I could Google it, but honestly, I don't care. It's old, man. That's all I know. This is all like, uh, this is a hand soldered board, I believe. So like, this is pretty old. Um, so anyways, you have these two potentiometer um, adjustment screws, uh, which are for the pitch control. Now, uh, what I did was, is I used Scotty's Trek and uh, a can of WD-40. Where's my WD-40? Just give me a second. And for everybody who's wondering what this is on my wall, this is my, uh, I haven't shown this to the world yet. Uh, this is the first video for this. This is my uh, wall of failures. If I fail to refix it, if I fail to fix it, it ends up on the wall. And this is my wall of failure. I put everything up on the wall there to uh, show me um, what's inside of things and remind me where I went wrong some places and uh, sometimes it just saves me time before I crack something open to look at the wall of failure and uh, get a good of idea of what's inside of it before I take it apart to help any future fixes. So that's what that is there. Um, so yeah, I just use my regular WD-40 with my straw saver and I uh, use the straw to very carefully shoot the contacts all over these two adjustment potentiometers. And then I'm going to put the bottom here back on very carefully. I'm actually going to put the camera down here for a second, guys. Sorry about that. I'm going to give you a one second black. Oh, uh, before also, um, I made sure that these little wires here, it's very hard to see, but you can see them sticking out here. I made sure that the, they go to the uh, the direct drive motor. I made sure that they weren't in contact with the board anywhere. And, and a lot of these old record players, I don't get it. And a lot of these other old devices, these wires that control the motor, they're just bare like this. Like it's really nuts. And they just leave them in the motor like that. And uh, they sometimes come in contact with uh, little spots on the board. So sometimes that's a good place to look for if you're having uh, problems with your uh, turntables. Because I've actually fixed turntables before in the past where all I've had to do literally is just lift one of these wires off the board and everything started working again. 
Um, also, there was a lot of old glue um, that had just started to run and puddle and carbon, like, get carbonized or whatever you call it. And uh, I didn't like the looks of it, so I just kind of chipped it off very, very, very carefully in between the traces and all these little uh, solder points to make sure that there was... Um, uh, uh, no uh, uh, bridging between any of the contacts that wasn't supposed to be there. Um, it, that did help the performance of the record player, but it was actually, it really was these two and the WD-40, as well as the potentiometer on the other side. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a blackout here for a minute. Blackout. Ooh. And flip you back to the other side. And I notice here, this is the uh, uh, pitch control, I guess what do you call it? Um, uh, pitch control sensor. And these two solder points right here, this one here in particular, I didn't like, it wasn't soldered well to the two, there's two wires that come off here onto your two leads. It wasn't soldered very well onto this, uh, lead in here the little copper coil in it, that's in here um, it picks up the magnet from the platter or the, or the uh, magnetic disturbance from the platter as it's going around and that's what uh, helps give you your pitch control but um, I didn't like the soldering here so I, uh, I reflowed the solder and got a really good gob of solder on that wire again and I sprayed a little bit of WD-40 into here into the potentiometer itself for the pitch control, and to the 3345 switch, and that was it. Uh, all in all, I think I took about uh, two and a half hours tear down and adjust on this, but I got it working great. Um, I really don't want to give it back. It sounds so good. Um, I plug it in, but it's a real pain in the butt. But um, I'm sure David will be happy to get it back tomorrow. Um, if you like this video, uh, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe and check out some more of my DIY uh, home repair videos. I fix a lot of things um, and I also automate a lot of things. I haven't put any automation videos up yet, but they're coming. Don't worry. Um, thanks again and uh, I'll see you another, in another video. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, don't forget to check out Scott's, uh, Scotty's video in the uh, description below. Thanks.